Hey, Wofford fans, Bill Marcello here. Welcome you into Conquer and Prevail, Tracking the Terriers, Episode 1. Each week on Conquer and Prevail, we are going to check in with various Wofford Athletic staff members to see what they are doing to keep their programs up to date. This week, we have coaches Lindsey Roos and Alec Purdy. Lindsey, first off, thanks for joining us today. Happy to be here. First off is what is keeping you busy during these quarantine times? <laughs> uh, very busy here. We have a seven and a nine-year-old. So a little first grade action, a little third grade math. Um, today we have a map of South Carolina and the river system in the okay. world. Yeah. Um, got some handwriting, some tables. We, we're very busy. <laughs> Now, I had heard through the grapevine, so you can tell me if this is true or not. Have you been doing some quarantine cooking? Have you been doing some special things there? Yeah, that's a thing for sure. Um, I've always liked to cook, and now I have no excuse not to. So I find it very therapeutic. I enjoy it a lot. So my daughter's gotten involved. Um, my son has now requested a strawberry pie. So that's what's on the menu coming up here this week. Oh, that sounds pretty good. So... You're a big cooker, obviously. If you could spend a day in the kitchen with a famous chef or someone, do you have anyone off the top of your head that, that you would want to spend a day with in the kitchen? Um, I like Barefoot Contessa, and so okay. I've watched the Dinah shows, and I have a couple of her books. Um, otherwise, I usually just kind of look for the recipe of the things that I have in the kitchen so I don't have to mm -hmm. go to the store and um, kind of make do from that. So. Um, I'm cooking shows too, and I think on Facebook, Jacques Papin has done a lot um, recently, and so he's kind of entertaining too. What have you all been able to do to kind of like get some exercise and, you know, not be stuck in front of a computer all day? Sure. Well, we're fortunate we live in a neighborhood with um, wide streets and a lot of hills, so my goal each day is to do 10 miles, so I've been out walking a lot, and we have uh, some trails and um, a creek on our property and so the kids go out there and run around and burn some energy and ride bikes and um, and we've been really lucky with the weather too. Now kind of staying on a similar subject but shifting towards the, the volleyball program um, what's the communication been like with with your staff and with your players during this time is it more individual calls have you done some group calls have the girls done stuff on their own? My girls are awesome they're um, connecting themselves kind of on their own, but also we've done a weekly Zoom call. And so we get to see each other's faces all together um, on Wednesdays at 1230, if you have nothing better going on. Um, <laughs> but we had started in the spring doing some book reports on some uh, motivational things, some John Gordon books, things like that. So they've um, done their presentations. And I think it's been good because they early on learned how to do, you know, share screen on Zoom and um, video and things like that. So we have that weekly call and then we've been with my staff. We just keep touching base throughout the day. Um, they're both local here still. So it's been easy to connect that way. That's good. And, and speaking of the staff, you know, Jordan got a great opportunity, moved on to, to Lamar. Allie got promoted and then you brought in uh, Justin to, to come help the, the program out. What can you say? Just obviously Allie's been with the program for a year kind of, you know, her making that transition and then bringing on the new addition of, of Justin Sanders. Yeah, it's been a smooth transition. I know that we didn't have as much gym time with Justin as we would have liked this spring, but um, he's been really receptive to kind of the th things that we want him to do and areas that we want him to help improve the team. You know, Allie moving into the associate head coach role was an easy transition. You know, I've known Allie a long time and she was an associate head at University of San Francisco. So she knows a lot of those responsibilities and really took over that recruiting um, coordinator position you know, seamlessly. I felt really good about that. Um, and so adding Justin in, especially being a middle, you know, that's one area that we feel like we can even be stronger at. So, you know, the time that we had Justin in the gym was outstanding. And now we've been able to, you know, communicate a little bit about film and looking at what we did in the past and how we can grow in that position, because we do have some really outstanding players in the middle this year. And part of college athletics is every year you're going to, you know, Kids are going to graduate. They're going to move on. You're going to lose some players. Obviously, you know, a girl like Katie, you're going to have to fill the void. But what can you say about, you know, I thought the emergence, in a sense, of Riley Coonan. I mean, she was always a player, but she was very dominant this past year. And then you have girls like Emily who played various roles. Some, some of those girls that stepped up, and you can count on going into this season as well. 
Yeah, for sure. I think Riley had a great year. Um, she really put in work during the summer, and I think that's what you saw pay off. And I think the other girls see that it's contagious. You know, she really took a big step in her game. And let's see, uh, Yafa, I thought had an outstanding year. I know she had a medical red shirt the year before, so no one really was able to see engage where she was at. But especially during the tournament, I think she kind of stepped into a bigger role, which was exciting for us. Um, and yeah, Emily played a couple different positions for us. And I think she's a kid that right now through quarantine um, hasn't missed a beat. You know, she's working on her one arm and stuff. So yeah. she's done a great job. And um, yeah, it, it was a fun year for some of those new people to step in a, a role like that. And when people say, how are you going to replace Katie? Well, we were able to rely on Katie so much um, in the last four years. You know, she it was an easy bailout for our offense. And now we're going to have to step up the things that we're able to do um, and make sure that we're we're less predictable you know and we we got off the hook a lot because katie was so talented um but now we're gonna have to be better across the board which i think is exciting for the team and obviously looking you forward to, to hi. hold on we, we have a, an all right we got a guest but now you have to you yes come in make a bunch of noise and then this is what the people want here. this is what the people want come on <laughs> get over here <laughs> this is Lyle. She is seven, and she's currently working on handwriting. Yeah, the Wofford fans will, will like meeting Lyle. <laughs> you want to say anything else? No, all right, that's it. No, oh, okay. There we go. Back, back. <laughs> there we go. Proof that, that homeschooling is happening. It is happening. <laughs> so kind of on a similar note, talking about, you know, hopefully going into a normal season we're hoping for, but – uh, you got a couple of signees the other day with some collegiate experience. Just maybe what, what can they bring to the table um, positionally and then maybe what they individually um, can do for the team? With Gracie, I think we're getting some depth in a position that we need it. We were dealing with um, having two setters last year, and when we were down one, we were really limited in our offense. And so that's why bringing in a third setter uh, made sense for us. Uh, with her competitiveness, I think she's a superb athlete. She's going to be a kid that just kind of adds that intensity into the gym. As far as um, Lexi goes, um, I, I get to see Lexi when she was a high school player, and she just is a powerful player. Um, and we need that that dominance from one of the pins. So we love that she's going to offer that, and we love that she's going to bring in, again, like that experience from playing in the SEC for a year and being at that level. Well, I think that uh, about does it for this. I really appreciate you stopping by. It's going to be uh, definitely a good look into the volleyball program and what y'all have been doing during quarantine. So, Lindsay, again, thank you very much. My pleasure. All right, fans, next up we have Wofford men's so assistant soccer coach, Alec Purdy. Alec, just want to say, first off, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's good to get on here and have a conversation with you and to hopefully get this out to some, uh, some Terrier fans. Yeah, and it'll be great for more, more fans to learn more of the staff. That's kind of one of our goals in, in doing this, this podcast, this video format as well. Um, now, now, you're someone – We'll kind of get into your background a little bit, but I, I think we should start with something that happened recently in your life that, that, that's probably changed it. You just had a child not too long ago. We did. Yeah, my wife, Lindley, and I, we just had a little baby girl on April 16th. So we, uh, little, her name is Satra K. Um, the name is slightly different. We get a lot of questions for it, but uh, that's my, actually my wife's maiden name, Satcher. So that's kind of where we came up with the, with that, I'm sure people will have some questions regarding that. It's a bit of a different name, but um, yes, we, we, we've had a, quite a bit of change now. So we have a, a little baby girl. Um, things are quite different from what they used to be, but they're both healthy and, and doing very well. And parenthood's been great up to this point. Yeah, I mean, that's obviously the question, just one to hear that everyone's doing well. How has the adjustment period kind of been? And obviously, it's kind of a, a unique time with the way the world is right now. But, uh, you know, I'm imagining you guys are spending a lot of time, just the three of you home together. 
Yeah, we we have been. Um, obviously, the the current circumstances are very difficult. It's unfortunate, but you know, for for myself personally, timing, you know, to be able to be here and help out my wife and and be there for the baby and and do all that is has been pretty nice actually. So, you know, I don't want to say we've gotten into a routine because right. uh, it's pretty pretty difficult with a newborn, as I'm sure people out there with with kids will understand. But I think we've done the a, a, as good of a job as we can in terms of trying to kind of carve out a bit of a, a groove or a routine in terms of sleeping patterns and kind of um, tapping each other out and, and taking our turns. So we didn't know if we were going to have a boy or a girl. Okay. So it was a, um, it was a surprise. So um, yeah, it was just kind of one of those things where it didn't really set in. I don't think until probably it was when we were sitting in the pre-op room. Yeah. I was just kind of sitting in that that room once they the bed she was on was huge and then once they wheeled that bed out I was just sitting yeah. in a room in a chair all by myself so <laughs> and I just kind of started to look around and all of a sudden I started to started to really hit home I mean that that's just awesome I mean we were talking about this this podcast you know as a staff who who, who do we want on there um and and someone mentioned you know Alec Purdy you know he just he just had a baby and I think fans are really gonna enjoy just just hearing what you just said I know we could talk all day about that, but I promise you it wouldn't be too long. So we'll kind of start with more soccer stuff. Um, with the unique times that we're in right now, how's the communication been on your staff trying to handle things day to day? And, you know, you're breaking up meetings with players individually. Just talk, tell us a little bit more about that process. Yeah, I mean, it's just been a, obviously a lot, of, a lot of phone calls and a lot of Zoom calls and a lot of text yeah. messages, really. I mean, that's pretty much what, what we can do at this moment. You know, we don't have our guys to coach them and we don't, it's a, we can't, we can't recruit right now either. So, you know, it's, we've been just communicating with our guys via Zoom calls. Um, like I said, text messages and things like that. The staff, we've been trying to stay on the same page. Um, you know, we're right now we're currently doing weekly, sometimes we'll do two a week uh, Zoom calls with the team, you know, just to kind of get everyone on the same page. But after the break um, in school and all that, I feel like it's been, all the guys have agreed that they've been, I won't say bombarded, but they've been very busy with their schoolwork. And so mm. we've tried not to take away from that too much. You certainly can't complain about it because everybody's in the same boat. You know what right. I mean? So you make the best of it. You know, you have to try and get creative and, and find ways to to get better. But we're also really fortunate, though, because we have a, a group of guys who are very uh, – who are incredibly driven. Um, they don't really need um, external motivators. They don't need us getting on them and things like that. They kind of – they motivate themselves. Um individually but then they also they're it's a tight-knit group so they're constantly speaking to one another and motivating each other and it's been good so I think that, that, that obviously we can't really monitor everything that they do but we, we're getting good feedback and, and guys are really taking pride in this time and, and viewing it as a as an opportunity to get better and get ahead as opposed to to take our foot off the gas and potentially fall behind. And for fans you know that are listening or going to watch this and, and don't know uh, last year was your first year along with head coach Joel Tyson, um, Nick Finati. I know you guys are all coming back going into year two. You know, can you tell how, that much of a difference, just how you guys gel and, and things like that? The longer a staff can stay together and, and learn more about each other, the, the more beneficial it is. And, you know, we all came in and, and, and Joel and Nick had had a, a previous relationship because Joel was obviously at Walker and then Nick was coaching club over in, in Greenville with CISA. Um, so they had had they had had some uh, some some sort of a prior relationship, but um, as a staff, no, like we're, you're constantly learning one another. You're you're, you're figuring out you know when to step back, uh, when to be assertive, um, kind of how to really just offset one another and complement one another, really. But yeah, no, we it, it's been a, a productive first year for sure. But now I think we we know each other well enough now where we know. Um, we don't really have to look out for, for when we need to kind of step in and contribute or, or when to back off. We just kind of know that now, I think, because we know each other's strengths and weaknesses more and everything is just a little more natural and a little more organic now. So we feel, feel really good as a staff and, you know, we're just, we're really excited to, you know, we're waiting just like everyone else to get going yeah. again, but we can't wait. Yeah. That's good. I, you know, again, Alec, thank you for joining us. I really think fans are going to enjoy hearing this conversation and, and learning more about yourself, your your new family, if you want to say new. I know you and Lindley have been together, but the addition of, of Sasha to your family, we're all just really happy that you guys are, you know, as healthy as you can be, hopefully. And, and 
um, you know, doing what you can during these times. But Alec, once again, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me on. We appreciate it.